Hey everyone and welcome to a new watercolor tutorial. Today we are going to paint this lovely red rose with the Como Rebe watercolors on Arches watercolor paper. And as always, in the beginning of every painting that I do, I never know how the painting will turn out. So it will be a surprise and it should be because it would be boring if you knew at the end exactly how it would turn out. So we will let ourselves surprise and try out some abstractions and see how it turns out. Okay, um, I think we can begin. I'm going to wet the entire surface today. I don't want to paint until the like edges of the watercolor paper. I think I want to try something new and just have some really almost maybe a tattoo-like abstract rose here. Um, I think that is what I will go for today. <laughs> so this is just water and I'm going to take some of the silver paint and just dip it carefully here. Before we continue, just so you know, this video is just the short version of the original full one hour long video that is available for my Patreon supporters. Just join me on Patreon at the advanced student level board here and get access to this lesson and over a hundred other free painting lessons as well in all sorts of mediums and with all sorts of keys. You can download the reference photos, material list and schedule print out and you can also share your own versions in our community. Just follow the link in the video description to join me on Patreon. I'm going to use some of the grass green and the olive green um, for abstractions that are going to be around the leaves. So I'm not painting the leaves, I'm just painting the abstractions first. It's a little bit much here, but it will fade out when it's dry anyways. So I'm going to hold my hand here and I'm going to add some abstractions here. <laughs> this is always like stress <laughs> for me, <laughs> but this looks nice. The lightest color of the rose is a light red. So we don't really have the whites or anything like that. It's a really bright red rose. <laughs> So I think I will go with crimson and carmine to give it a slight like direction into the pink color field. <laughs> I'm going to fill in the entire rose with this base tone. Okay, now it's dry and we can do the most exciting part, in my opinion at least, which are like the individual petals and all the details in them, because I think that's most exciting. Okay, let's now paint the mid-tones. I'm going away from the pink, so I'm going to use a different tone here. I'm starting with this bright orange, Gamboge orange, and crimson. Now we have a really bright like right traffic light right almost <laughs> um, let's take only a little bit and I'm going I'm just going to start with one petal so it doesn't really matter where you start before we continue I would like to thank today's video sponsor Skillshare if you don't know Skillshare yet Skillshare is a huge online learning community with millions of creative people and thousands of courses about all sorts of different topics. Most of their classes are super short, mostly under 60 minutes and you can watch them whenever you want. They have lessons about basically everything. Video making, fine art, illustration, any sort of hobby you might have, writing, just creativity in general and basically everything you can think of. I recently watched Paint With Me, vintage inspired botanical illustration by Kendall Hilgard, and I absolutely love the course. She makes these beautiful flowery paintings and you can learn how to paint them with watercolors step by step 
It's a really easy course for everyone. And if you like to paint flowers like in this video, this might be the right course for you too. So head over to the video description because the first thousand people who click the link will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. And now let's continue with the video. Each little petal has an individual shadow. And we're just going to paint that now. I will paint this entire petal dark because the mid-tones, here's like a lighter area, is also very dark. So I'm going to paint this entire petal dark. And then here also it goes into, like it merges into the shadow of the bordering petal. Here I'm just going to draw this little mid mid-tone here along this petal. And then I'm going to blend it out. So I'm just clean my brush and then go, okay, I, need to, I need a wet brush basically. Just going along the paint and as you can see, it blends out beautifully. Okay, onto the right side. Um, I think I'm going to, yeah, so here we have the dark area, the shadow, which is black in the reference photo. And then we have a little bit of a lighter area in between. And then the petal gets darker along the edges. And this is what I'm doing right now. So I'm just mimicking what I see on my reference photo, like this. Then here too, let's just blend it out. Now we have a really smooth gradient there. This looks really nice. Okay, now here actually, for example, um, it gets darker. But if we would add a dark color here, it would lead right into the next one. So we have to wait. Um, all, everything that touches will lead into each other when it's still wet. So we can continue on this area here before we can continue on the other ones. Um, now let's add this red tone here below this petal in the front. And then on the bottom of this smaller petal here. Then we can also just Maybe blend it out a bit. Um, I think like this. Here we want to be really precise around the edges because this is a really simple composition. And if you have something so simple and you want it to look crisp, for example, and realistic, you have to be precise when you paint edges. And edges are at the outside of an element, like the outside of the petals, but they're also in the inside. Everything basically has an edge. Some edges are smooth, some edges are um, crisp and sharp, and it's really good to pay attention to, to these edges and just recognize them. Yeah, especially when petals meet, you will have edges. There it's good to be precise. Okay. Now, um, what we can do is just let it dry and I, I think I will use my hair dryer. I might, maybe I will just smooth out this little edge here because this is actually smooth and not harsh. Here also a little bit, just make it a bit smoother. And here as well, like this. Here's like a little line and then and then I will let it dry. Now it's dry and um, what I'm going to do now is I'm working with this little paint from the Komoridi palette and this is neon red <laughs> and um, I'm working today with it because if you have a look at these highlights they're not going to be as bright as on our reference photo. I'm going to use this paint now and we are applying it 
on the entire rows. So the entire rows will get tinted with this neon, neon red at all. Um, and then um, we can add the darker colors. Oh my gosh. This is what I mean when I don't know in the beginning like how my painting will look like because I just get ideas in the middle of the process what to try out and this is one of it. Now we definitely need some shadows here because everything looks really flat now. For the shadows we need a neutral dark tone. So we want to go directly very close to the edge here and make sure to have this, a clean edge. So here in the middle it's a bit lighter. So I will use a little bit of the crimson and the carmine and a bit of water. Then I will just add this here in the middle. So now it is more or less dry and we can continue on the remaining. So I'm going to paint this larger one here on the bottom, which is, it's way darker, so we have to add yet another layer here. And we are pretty close to finishing it. Um, what I want to do now is to add little contours and little tiny details on the edges of the petals. Especially, look, here, it looks good, but you have kind of wobbly edges. So we want to really get all the tiny details that we can see that are contours. Okay. I have added more of these contours and little details and what we are going to do now is we want to destroy a little bit of it again and just add a little bit of water here and then some of the red and just let it flow. I will just use olive green and the metallic green because it is so nice. And I will start with the leaves first. So we need to concentrate on the shapes. Some simple brush strokes, it's already enough. Then the tip of the leaf should be sharp. Here we can switch to the detail brush and make a really nice sharp tip. Okay, now let's add the stems like this. And we have a little stem that goes this way. And now um, I want to add some splashes, more splashes. So this is a bit scary, I know. Especially if you follow along with me, you might not want to do it because you can ruin your painting. But I think it's always worth it, even if you took maybe too much splash. So, Whew. no, this is nice. I like it. This looks really cool. Um, the good thing is, you can also take it. If you don't like, most of this is a little bit of a larger one. Should I leave it or not? It is nice though. I think I will just remove this one here. Right? Okay, I have to admit, this is probably the most tacky rose I have ever painted because it just comes with nothing but like abstractions. I really like the abstraction, so I think it's a cool rose. And especially if you know how to paint a rose, you can add this element to your painting. For example, in all my paintings, I have lots of roses and I don't think that my paintings look tacky but if you have it maybe as a main motif it might be a bit much <laughs> but um, I, I like it nevertheless and then um, 
We have finished this little rose study and I hope you liked it. I hope you could learn something new. And yeah, we see you in the next one. Have a wonderful painting day. Bye bye.